بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى ابن عمه علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى الصفوة الخيرة من أصحابه المنتجبين اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر صدق الله العلي العظيم It's the most blessed and the most honorable night throughout the whole year It is a night of paramount sublimity and superiority ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر superior to 1,000 month in its spiritual value this is ليلة القدر my friends this is a night where our livelihood and our lifespan is going to be determined by the Lord during this night from sunset until dawn our livelihood ليلة تقدر فيها الآجال والأرزاق The livelihood and the lifespan And whatever important is going to happen to you Is going to be determined In one of the chapters we read tonight This chapter is called Surah Al-Dukhan In this surah God says فيها يفرق In this night, the night of Qadr We determine in this night, we determine فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم Every important matter that touches your life and your future is going to be decided and determined tonight فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم أمرا من عندنا إنا كنا مرسلين رحمة من ربك رحمة من ربك إنه هو السميع ال Alim, tonight is the night of mass and wholesale mercy, the night of sweeping and extensive mercy of God. He loves to bestow his mercy. He has a huge reserve of mercy that he wants to spend tonight. He wants to bring down his mercy upon us tonight. He is determined, my friends. To engulf us and embrace us with his mercy and his forgiveness in this night. This night has innumerable, endless, and countless bounties and gifts. So be one of those lucky ones who are going to receive some of these gifts. Do not leave the session. Do not let the sun rise tonight, today, or tomorrow morning without being one of the chosen ones, one of the selected ones, one of those fortunate enough to receive God's mercy tonight. And that depends on you, my friends. God never discriminates between his people. God never has bias against any people. God is the Lord of the universe. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the entire universe. It is us 
The choice has been left for us to decide whether we really need, accept his mercy and his bounties, or we reject them. This is our choice tonight. One of the meanings of Salamun hiya hatta matla al fajr. This night is peaceful. Salamun hiya. It's a peaceful until the break of the dawn. One of the meanings of this, of this section, of this sentence in the Quran, is that the angels, they, from sunset of this night till the break of the dawn, they continuously greet and salute Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, Ajalallahu ta'ala faraj al Sharif. This night is continuing after the Prophet. The Prophet himself says, the angels would not descend only upon the Prophet during his lifetime. When the Prophet dies, the angels are going to continue their descent. Those of you who are many in this session who are familiar with the Arabic grammar and Arabic literature, تتنزل is continuous. This process is continuing until the day of judgment. So in the absence of the Prophet himself, his successors, the Imams, the 12 Imams, the angels are going to descend on them and they descended on them. And tonight, tonight they descend upon the 12 Imam, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi Al-Muntabar Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And they show him he's the representative of the divine in this earth, on this earth, in this universe. They show him what will happen to us. This is why it is imperative for us to salute the Imam and to pray for him so God would hasten his reappearance. Today, the whole globe, the entire earth is overwhelmed with injustice and tyranny. And the only one who can bring real peace, real stability, and real justice is the 12th Imam, Al Imam Al Mahdi Al Muntadar, Ajalallahu Ta'ala, Farajahu Al Sharif. My friends, tonight God, as I said, has a, a huge reserve of mercy saved for us. And he wants to dispose this tonight. He wants to bring it tonight. So be one of those who can receive. And never have any doubt about God's forgiveness. Never speculate. Never have a second guess about God's, God's forgiveness. God himself, he says in chapter 39, قُلْ يَا Oh Prophet, say to your community, say to the Muslims, say to mankind, say to them, O oh, my servants, who did an extravagant of abuse, excessiveness of abuse against their own souls. Do not be despondent of God's mercy. For God... For God, in Allah, verily, He forgives all sins, all sins, if you are willing and if you are sincere. No sin is going to be left out. God has opened His arms to receive you, to welcome you, to embrace you, to bring you back to His sanctuary. So do not hesitate. And do not have a doubt. Never have a doubt about God's mercy. This is what we say in the dua. We say no matter how the sin is huge and gruesome, God's mercy is bigger. Allahumma inna rahmataka arja min amali. Your mercy is more promising than my deeds. Wa inna afwaka a'zamu min dhanbi. Your forgiveness is bigger than my sin. Allahumma in kana dhanbi indaka azeeman fa'afwuka a'zamu min dhanbi. Allahumma in lam akun ahlan an ablugha rahmatak, farahmatuka ahlun an tablughani. 
وتسعني لأنها وسعت كل شيء Oh God, if I am not qualified If I am not qualified to receive your mercy Your mercy is qualified to embrace me And to reach out to me What do we recite in dua, Kumail? اللهم إني أسألك برحمتك التي وسعت كل شيء The first sentence we begin the dua This is the very first sentence Our commander, our leader, the student of the Prophet, the servant of the Prophet, Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, this is the way he teaches us to speak to God. We begin with his mercy because his mercy embraces everything in this universe. Nothing is excluded, excluded from God's mercy. He says himself in chapter 6, Surah Al An'am, وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا Once those who have faith in God and a trust in God, they come to you, O oh, the Messenger of God, say to them, فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ Greet them, receive them, send peace upon them. فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ Your Lord has prescribed mercy upon himself. This is very powerful, my friends. God would never pre prescribe anything upon himself. He's a free. He can do anything he wants to do. But he said, I made it mandatory upon myself. I made it mandatory upon myself that I bestow mercy on mankind. كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ أَنَّهُ Verily, من عمل منكم سوءا بجهالة Any one of you does evil out of ignorance Not out of defiance Out of ignorance If he does evil out of ignorance ثم تاب من بعده Then he or she repents after that وأصلح And mends Or amends فإنه غفور رحيم Yes Tonight is the night when you fix it, fix the broken relationship. Tonight is the night of forgiveness. Tonight is the night of repentance. And tonight is the night that you have to make this a pledge and this a promise, I would never go back to the same sin, neither any other sin, God. I will maintain my re relationship with you. I'll make it the best. I'll get closer to you as much as I can. I would not get far away from you. I would not disobey you. ثم ثم تاب من بعده وأصلح فإنه غفور رحيم. Truly, your Lord is forgiving and merciful. فإنه غفور رحيم. I have a story that I am not going to share the whole story with you because this story is so horrendous. So appalling, so gruesome, terrifying this story. It gives me goosebumps when I read this story or even when I remember it. Every time I remember it, I get terrified. It's very disgusting. I can't mention the whole story, but the story is mentioned in the books of history and the books of Tafsir. A terrible, terrible crime took place during the time of the Prophet in the city of Medina by a young person who was single, who was non-married. Non His job was very weird, very sick. He used to go to cemeteries. When they bury the dead ones, he would raid the cemetery the same night. He will excavate the grave. He will take the shroud, the coven, out of the body of the dead ones. And he will go and resell it in the market. Very terrible thing. Very sick. His neighbor knew. She was terminally ill. She was about to die. And she was young. She sent after him. She said to him, I know what you have been doing for so many years. But I kept it secret. I didn't share this because you are my neighbor. I know where you go. I know what you do. So I have purchased, I'm going to die soon. I've purchased many kefans, not one or two. Choose anyone. Promise me 
When I die, you don't come to my grave. He said, okay, of course, of course, sure. I would not. So he promised her. And he took all the coffins. When she died, he decided in the beginning not to go. But Satan is stronger. When we cannot maintain our faith, when we don't have good prayers and good fasting and good deeds, this is, we become weak. Satan is able to approach us and deceive us. So he came to him and he said to him, tonight is your night. Go. Nobody knows. She's dead. I know you gave her your word, but she's dead. She doesn't understand. And he kept telling him until this young man left his house to the cemetery. And he went to the grave. He knew the grave because he participated in the funeral during the day. He was among people who went to the cemetery for her funeral. He knew the grave. He opened the grave. He took the coffin. Not only that, he did the shameful act with her because she was naked in her, body, in her grave. Once he did this, of course, shaitan, he will come and encourages you until the moment you commit the sin, the shaitan is going to abandon you immediately. Immediately. Shaitan stands with you and he wants you to commit the sin. And he promises you it would be easy. Don't worry. You will repent. I'm helping you. The moment you commit that sin, he runs away from you. And this is exactly, exactly what Satan did to him. He abandoned him. This young man, he went crazy. He was thinking of killing himself and committing suicide. He could not sleep the nights until one day he decided that he has to tell the Prophet about this. He went to the mosque of the Prophet while the Prophet was sitting with his companions and his community. He came to the Prophet. He could not even speak about it. But he was telling the Prophet, my sin is very shameful, is very terrible, is very horrible. I cannot even speak it. The Prophet said to him, He said, My sin is greater than the heaven. He said, My sin is greater than the entire earth. He said, My sin is greater than the oceans. Then the Prophet said to him, Is your sin greater or the mercy of God? Here, he said, Ya Rasulullah, Bal rahmatullahi a'adham. No, I can't say my sin is greater than God's mercy. God's mercy is greater. And he told the Prophet his sin. The Prophet was shocked. Imagine the Prophet whose mercy for mankind is very strong. When he told him about this sin, the Prophet was shocked. The Prophet said to him, Stop, stop. Don't continue. I don't want to hear this. The man took to the mountains. He left the mosque not knowing where to go. He came to the Prophet whose the Quran says about him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And now the Prophet tells him, Stop! I can't hear this. So he took to the mountains of Medina. Medina is surrounded by mountains. And for 40 days, he was in the mountain. He was speaking to God and repenting. At day number 40, Allah sends Jibreel to the Prophet. He said, Ya Rasulullah, God greets you. And he says, this man, young man who came to, to you, though he... His crime is so huge and unspeakable. But after 40 days, he was sincere. He was sincere in his repentance. And God says, you have to go and bring him and tell him the good news that God had forgiven him. The Prophet asked about his location. Jibreel said, Ya Rasulullah, you have to ask about the location yourself and you search for him. So the Prophet asked the companions about him and they were going from mountain, one mountain into another until they found him. 
He had chained himself. And he was there. He completely changed. He was completely dark because of the sun. Dehydration, no food, no drink. In that remote area, the Prophet said to him, Fulan, I am coming with good news from your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has answered your prayers. After 40 days and nights of repentance, of being sorry, regretting what you did, and going back to your Lord, ultimately God has accepted your repentance. So he raised his head. He said, Ya Rasulullah, do me a favor, please. Since God has forgiven me, I need one more favor from God. Ask God to take my life to him. I don't want to come back to the city anymore. I don't want to renew a sin since I have a clean record now and God has forgiven me. He went to sujood. The prophet raised his hand. This young man, while he was doing the prostration, the sujood, he died during his sujood. This is exactly what God says in the Quran. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Whatever terrible act you have committed, do not give up on God's mercy and God's forgiveness. Tonight is Laylatul Qadr. The night where God reaching out to you. He's coming to you. He's asking you to speak to him, to share with him. Not to tell your sin, your sin to anyone, but to God. Share it with God and ask him his mercy. My friends, nobody is infallible. We are all sinners because we are human beings. And sometimes a moment, I call it a moment of power outage. Power outage. Darkness. Ghafla. The Quran says ghafla. He calls this moment the moment of ghafla, disconnection from God. How does that happen? How do we commit a sin knowing that this is a sin, this is bad, this is terrible? You know what happens at the time when the desire is in control. When the desire becomes in control, then it would knock down reason, the intellectual power. Aql is being overridden or desire overrides and overcomes the aql, the reason. So you don't understand, you don't think, you are not reasonable, you are not yourself in that moment. You fell victim to the Satan's temptations. How do you keep your aql strong? Do you know how? When you recite this book. When you are always familiar with this book, not just in the month of Ramadan, always, always, this book is with you. This book is next to your desk, next to your bed. This book is always with you. You carry this book in your heart and your mind. You fall in love with this book, with the Holy Quran. When you recite the Holy Quran, when you recite the du'as, some of these du'as we're going to recite tonight, they have very deep meanings. Dua'ul Jawshan al Kabir, Dua'u Abi Hamza al Thamali. When you recite these du'as, they keep your brain and your reason healthy. So you don't, you don't fall victim. You don't fall victim to, to temptations and desires. The prayers. Someone was asking me why, was asking me why five times a day, five times a day to keep your reason healthy and strong so you don't become weak. Once you come, become weak, then that is the power outage. That is the failure of the system. That is where the shaitan, it would be so easy for him to strike on you and destroys you. So maintain your health, your mental health. Bidhikrillah, ala bidhikrillahi tatma'innul and also my friends keep your reason healthy by especially the young generation staying away from intoxicants staying away from destructive substances 
staying away from drugs, staying away from alcohol, staying away from smoking. Keep your reason, your aql healthy. Do not intoxicate your aql. Your aql is the one who's going to keep you strong, straightforward, and righteous. Do not compromise your aql. Anything that compromises your reason, stay away from it. Stay away from it. What do we ask God tonight? Tonight is the night of dua. It's the night where you raise your petitions to God. It's the night where you say, oh God, give me this and give me that. Look at chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 200 in this book. 200 through 202. One of the most beautiful verses in the Quran. Quran teaches us what to ask God tonight. What should we ask him? What are the priorities? We learn that from the Quran. We learn adab dua the manners, the etiquettes of supplication from the Quran itself. The Quran says we have two groups of people in this life. Both of them pray, but look at the difference between them. Look at the difference between the first group and the second group. The first group says, فَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَقِ The first group only asks God about this life, this temporary life. Only material items. Only material items. Like kids, two years old, three years old, they go to a man who has boxes of you know, money in front of him, billions of dollars in front of him. And those kids, little kids, they go to him, they say, Ammu, please, can you give us some candies? They ask for some candies, which is only a few pennies. They don't ask for billions of dollars because they don't understand. Kids, they understand the value, the value of candies. They don't understand the value of real money. We do the same. Sometimes we ask God about some candies. We leave the real substance, the real gift, we leave it behind. We forget about it. We ask about some candies. And this is what exactly God says in the Quran. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَقِ They ask about some material thing. Oh God, I need my car is broken. I need another car. Oh God, I need this house, this apartment, this. But they forget about the real, real questions, real needs in this life. Maybe God will give you a new car, but it would not solve your problem, believe me. Maybe God will give you a mansion. It would not solve your problem. Maybe God gives you several million dollars, still would not solve your problem. The second group, listen to the Quran. Quran says, وَمِنْهُمْ The second group, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ The first group, they asked about the dunya, but not the goodness of the dunya. See, it didn't say hasana in the first group. But the second group, آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً What does that mean? They are asking still for material things, but material things that leads into goodness and success. They don't just say, God, give me money. They say, God, give me the money that works for me, not against me. Money that I can benefit and excel from it, not the money that I will destroy myself with it. I've seen some people, they did not ruin their life through poverty. They ruined their life when they were rich, when they got the money. The day they did not have money, their, right, their life was good. They were satisfied. The day they started making money, they started going into the wrong direction. Shaitan would not leave them. Atina fi dunya hasan means Whatever you want to give me, material things, 
they should help me, prepare me for my next trip, next journey to the Akhirah. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَ Definitely, if these items are good and lawful that you acquire them and you ask for them, these items are going to send you in the right direction. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَ And ultimately, وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Avert us, the punishment of the hellfire. أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ نَصِيبٌ مِّمَّا كَسَبُوا وَاللَّهُ سَرِيعُ الْحِسَابُ God says, definitely we will grant them. So tonight, there are certain small issues that you have to ask, but worthy and important, such as, such as, this is the first group, ask God for good health. Why good health? To continue serving, to continue helping, to continue reaching out to your parents, to your community members, to those who are poor. Ask him good health. Ask him money. But the money that becomes, becomes a source of a blessing, not curse. What sort of money becomes the source of a blessing? The money that comes from halal, lawful source. Not the money that, is, that becomes from haram source. The money that becomes from haram, haram source would, would not bring stability into your family. It would not bring peace into your home. It would not bring peace into your corporation and company and jobs. I was shocked when the president two days ago, he said, I made my first trip to the Middle East, to Saudi Arabia, and I signed contracts for $510 billion. Why? To bring jobs, jobs, jobs. But I wonder, the job that is created from selling weapons to some people to kill each other, would that job be a source of a blessing for us? You answer the question. I am worried about America under this president. Not any job is a good job. Not the money that you make at the expense of the suffering and the pain of others. This is not a good job. Not when you sell weapons for neighbors to kill each other and bomb each other. This is not a good job. This is not a good business, believe me. He thinks this is a good business. Why? Because he only looks, as the Quran says, منهم يقول ربنا آتنا في الدنيا Only give me material. But he doesn't look at the bigger picture. Because sometimes this material that you are getting, it would be the source and the reason of damnation for you. As God, to give you a job which is not at the expense of others. The job where you really bring relief and happiness, not weapons, not airplanes to bomb. No, this is not a good job. I don't believe in this job. I don't believe in this economy. I believe in the economy that is connected to goodness and purity. A good economy is the economy that brings real stability and real peace and real happiness. An economy that feeds the hungry stomachs. Economy that builds schools and hospitals and orphanages. Not weapons. So ask Allah tonight. Ask Him, yes, I need wealth. I need money to build myself, to build my family, to build my community, to reach out to others. I don't want my money to be the source of destruction, the source of suffering, the source of war or, or conflict. Then again ask, ask Allah tonight. And I see many faces right in front of me who are still single. And you must ask God to find you a good, good spouse, not just a spouse. Don't just ask him that you get married. Tell him, I want good marriage, good marriage, righteous marriage. God, send me someone who's righteous. Number one. Number one, equality of that person, be it a husband or a wife, who is righteous. Who loves you. Who reveres you. Who respects you. Before he respects me, as an individual, he respects God. Because once he respects God, definitely is going to respect me. So ask Allah 
زوج صالح زوجة صالحة Righteous partner that brings happiness to you and gets you closer to the Lord and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course when you have good marriage again ask him to have good children Rabbi habli min ladunka dhurriyatan who knows the verse in the Quran Hunalika da'a Zakariya Rabbah this is biblical story in Surah Maryam هنالك دعا زكريا ربه قال رب هب لي من لدنك ذرية طيبة ذرية طيبة Again, I don't need any children I need good children, righteous children Children who are obedient to God Children who are conscious of God They respect God Not children that I run after them in the streets who give me who give me more pain and more trouble the riyatan tayyiba ask god tonight and ask him success in your job in your school in your life in your business this is the first part of it now we come to the real demands the first one these were the appetizers easy God would answer them. Now, you know what you ask God? These are the grand, the cardinal demands that we ask God. Ask things that are faithful to you, momentous to you, consequential to you, to your life. The first thing, ask God tonight, ask him to change your heart and your nafs, your soul, to be a better servant of God. To be the better abd lillah, true servant, true slave of God. Because the Quran says, Qad aflaha man zakkaha. Indeed, the real success is when you change your soul, when you keep your soul under control, when you curb your desires. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. When you purify your soul. Waqad khaba man dasaha. The one who neglects his soul or he gives in. To the temptations is khab. Khab means disappointment and failure. Qad aflaha man zakkaha. Wa qad khaba man dasaha. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get it closer to him. The, the, the wife of Pharaoh, she was living in the best palace in Egypt, in ancient Egypt. Best palace. Best man mansion that overlooks the Nile River. She had thousands of maids and servants. She was the wife of the emperor. But still she said to God, I don't like this life. No, this is not my dream. This is not my ambition. They asked her, what is your ambition? She said, I want to you be your neighbor. I want you, God. You... These things would not fill my, my heart. You fill my heart. Your presence in my heart. You bring me, you bring me real satisfaction. Let's ask Allah to bestow on us a nafs, a soul that is number one content. Qana'a. We are content and happy with what I have. Whether it is material, immaterial, family, whatever I have, I'm happy with it. I'm satisfied with it. Let God curb the greed. Keep myself away, my soul away from greed, from jealousy, from hate. Tonight, my friends, when you pray, not just to pray for yourself. You know what our Imam teach us to do tonight they say when you pray pray for your enemies too pray for their guidance pray for their salvation if they are doing something terrible pray that they will stop it they would quit that pray for them you have to ascend above these these temptations you have to have a bigger soul bigger vision tonight ask Allah to install love, real love in your heart. Not just love for friends and family members, but love also for your enemies. 
Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take away bukhl, greed, stinginess out of your heart. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take prejudice out of your heart. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take hubbun nafs, hubbun nafs, ego, self-centeredness out of your heart. So you start loving people around you. These are the questions we have to ask. These are the real du'as. These du'as make real difference in your life. If you just ask him for a house and money and a job, you leave this room tonight, you leave this mosque, you are the same. Believe me, you are the same. And God says, I might give them to you. You know, I might give them. But you are not happy. You are still not happy. But when the soul is changed, our perception is changed, that is the real happiness. That is the real success. Ask Allah to give you the capacity for more forgiveness so you can forgive those who insulted you, those who wronged you, Tell him, oh God, please give me that capacity, that faculty, that energy that I overcome and break away from whatever I have in my heart against my enemies too. I don't want even to hate my enemies. I don't want to hate them. I want to forgive them. And if they have done something wrong, there is a day of judgment. You are the judge there. You are the ultimate judge. They can't get away from it. This is how we make change. And ask God also, Allahumma inni, this is in dua Abu Hamza al-Thamali at the end of the dua. Tell him, oh Allah, keep me away from laziness. I don't want to be lazy. I want to be a hardworking, positive person, optimistic, full of energy every single morning when I open my eyes. I have lots of energy to serve, to help, to move forward. Keep depression away from me. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kasali. Kasal means laziness. Wal-fashal, failure. Wal-ham, ham anxiety. Keep anxiety away from me. Anxiety destroys me. I don't want to be anxious. I don't want to be worried. I don't want to fear anything. Wal-hammi, wal-jubni, cowardness. Wal-bukhli, stinginess. Wal-ghaflati. Ghafla, I mentioned the meaning of ghafla. Power outage. Forgetfulness, when I forget about you. When my heart is disconnected with you, this is ghafla. Wal ghaflati wal qaswati, qaswa, violence. I want to have a tender heart, a heart that feels for any tragedy, for any person, for any homeless that I see, I rush to help him or her. Anyone who says help, I'll be the first responder. I'll go there. This is my duty. والقسوتي والمسكنة poverty والفقر deprivation والفاقة ومن كل بلية every bad evil I seek refuge in you these are the duas that we have to make tonight اللهم إني أعوذ بك من نفس لا تشبع ومن قلب لا يخشع give me satisfaction even if I have little food small place even my car is not brand new but I'm happy with it because I always look at those who are below me, not those who are above me. This morning at 5 a.m., I read the LA Times every day after morning prayers, after Salat al-Fajr, the electronic version. There is a story, check it out, very interesting. Someone who is a multimillionaire here in Beverly Hills, and he has the largest collection of sport cars, expensive cars. He says the value of these cars is about $50 million. And he collects Lamborghinis. And he wanted to purchase another model, a better model convertible con uh, Lamborghini. The company said, no, we don't sell you. You are not qualified. Imagine he's a multimillionaire. Because they make only 80 and they ch give them to people who say, they, the company says they deserve it. Now, how they deserve it, I really don't know. Because they have <laughs> piety, more taqwa, they pray more, I, I don't know. And this guy, 
who has a fortune, who has millions of dollars, millions of dollars. Only one company is worth $300 million, one of his companies, $300 million. He is feeling bad. Imagine, he has, he has some 50 fancy car in his garage, down, down the stairs in, his, in the basement, and still he feels bad because he could not get this new Lamborghini. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? If you have agreed, I, I'm not, I, I'm not t t talking ill about him because I don't know him. But I say, when you have agreed, nothing can fill, nothing can fill your stomach. Nothing. But once you have satisfaction, even if your car is a broken old car, you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. At least I have some means of transportation. Others even do not have this. See? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min nafsin la tashba, wa min qalbin la yakhsha, wa min ilmin la yanfa'a, wa min salatin la turfa'a, wa min du'a'in la yusma'a. O oh God, I seek refuge in you from a soul that is greedy, greedy, greedy. Whatever you give to it, it says I need more and more and more. Stay away from that. Ask God. Uh, ask God tonight to give you a soul, nafs, which is always happy, which is always grateful, always grateful. I mentioned this yesterday in the Friday prayers. In this life, we have two categories. They are mentioned in Surah Al-Insan. إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا Two categories. One of them are grateful, shakir, happy, thankful. The other always complaining, always unhappy, always nagging. Always they need more and more and more. إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا Ask God to make you from the first group. Shakir, grateful. Before I conclude, and ask, as Imam Zain al-Abideen says in Dua Abu Hamza, make it brief in one sentence. Ask Allah, says, Ilahi akhraj hubba dunya min qalbi. Take out of my heart the fascination with this dunya. Fascination is very dangerous. When you become fascinated with materialism, this is very dangerous. You know why? Because someone who's fascinated with the dunya, he would even sell his parents cheap. He would sell his wife. He would sell his children. He would sell his country. Because he's enchanted with the dunya. He's fascinated with the dunya. So I ask God to take hubbut dunya, the fascination with this dunya, out of your heart. Keep your heart healthy and strong. Pray for your parents. Tomorrow is the Father's Day. All of you have fathers here. Many of them are still alive. If you want to send a gift, put it on hold. Put it on hold. Don't purchase it. You know what is the best gift you give to your father? Respect and obedience. Don't go and buy him flowers or chocolate or something and then you think he's happy. Your father is happy when you respect him. When you spend time with your father. When your father advises you on a good issue and you listen. You have a listening ears. This is the best gift you give to your father on Father's Day, tomorrow, Sunday. Tell your father, Daddy, this season, this Father's Day, I, I did not bring material, I did not bring flowers, but I'm going to promise you that I'm going to respect you and spend time with you and listen to your advice. That is the best gift. And also pray for those who are deceased. Pray for those who are sick in the hospitals, and there are many of them. There are some of them who are very dear to us. Every night they are here in this masjid, this year they are in the hospitals, waiting for their fate, waiting for the mercy of the Lord. Pray for them tonight. Pray for your family, for your teachers, for your children, for your neighbors. Pray for the poor, pray for the refugees, the number of refugees is on the rise in the Muslim countries. Pray for them. Pray for those who have been displaced from their homes. Many people, they had homes until five days ago. 
You know that tower which burnt out in London? I was reading in the paper, the number of the casualties are 90. 90 people they burned to death in the middle of the fire, in the middle of the night. Within a few minutes, few minutes. I was reading a story of one of them, three Syrian refugees. Two of them were able to escape. The third one, when he was about to come down and escape, the stairs collapsed so he could not go. So he was speaking to his brothers on the cell phone. His brother said, the last sentence, he said, give my salam to my mother. Tell her I love you. And please always recite Quran for me when I die. They say a few seconds later, the phone went out. And he burned. A young man who escaped Syria, who escaped war in Syria, only to find his fate in West London. This is life, my friends. This is the reality of this life. Nothing is guaranteed, believe me. Nothing is guaranteed. When the ajal comes, this is why I ask Allah that you fulfill your mission in this life, you fulfill it, and then if he wants, God decides to take you away to him, he is welcome to do so. But you have to fulfill your mission in this life. And I pray for those who are lost, I don't mean only physically lost, but morally and spiritually lost. We have many in the community, Muslim community and non-Muslim, who are confused, who cannot find their way. They go in the wrong direction. They bring misfortune to themselves and to their families. Pray for them. Pray for their guidance. Pray that God would hold their hands tonight and bring them back and salvage them. Pray for yourself to be successful in the Akhirah and God will grant you tonight immunity, immunity against hellfire and releases you from the hellfire. Allahumma a'tiq riqabana min nar That is the best dua. The Quran says, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاز If you can escape if you can narrowly escape the pit of fire and you make it inside paradise, that is real success. Faqat faz. That is real success. That is real salvation. Pray, if you are a father, pray that God makes you the best father, the best, best dutiful father, the best responsible father. Tomorrow, Father's Day, in America and elsewhere, they think Father's Day, we just eat cake and we celebrate and we dance. Father's Day, it means that we fathers have to be more responsible towards our children. Mother's Day means we have to be, mothers have to be more responsible towards their children. Ask your God to make you a model father, not just father, a model father in the community. This is the wish of the prophets. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنَ If you are a mother, ask God to make you a model mother, a model in compassion and care and mercy. If you are a son, ask God to make you a model son in your, in your dutifulness and respect to your parents. Be the jewel in your community to rush to help your parents. Be number one. Even if you are 10 brothers and sisters, you have to be number one in serving your parents. Even if your parents are away from you, you still can serve them by calling them and helping them and visiting them and inviting them and see what they need. Ask your mother, your dad what they need and be the first one to fulfill their needs. And pray for them. That is the best service to the parents is when you remember them in your prayers. And last but not least, that is the most important dua tonight. Guess what is it? Ask Allah to hasten the reappearance of our Imam. يُعَجِّلْ فَرَجَ imam عَجَّلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَرَجَ To hasten his return. We need a leader in the dua of the dua that we recite, not dua al-faraj, the dua just Samir Amiri was reciting, iftitah, 
اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا صلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا We are fatherless We are leaderless This is why we are in disarray This is why we need a commander We need a leader We need an imam And as long as we commit sins that it, it is going to be delayed and delayed and delayed It depends on us We want him to come back Look at yourself. Fix yourself. Repent from your sins. Change yourself. Transform yourself. The Imam is going to be ready. Allah says, I put it conditional on you. If you are ready for him, I will send him tonight. If not, don't ask me to send him because it, will be, it would be a waste of time. Waste of time. He would not even find supporters or helpers. Let's prepare for tonight. Before I conclude, most likely the Eid is going to be on Sunday the 25th, my brothers and sisters. Most likely. Follow us through the website and the emails that we send. And we're going to inform you by Saturday, inshallah. By Saturday night, we're going to inform you if the Eid is Sunday, then Salatul Eid is going, the first Salat is going to be here at 8 a.m. in the morning, inside and outside. And Zakatul Fitr, which is mandatory, Zakatul Fitr is mandatory on the day of Eid to be given to the poor and the needy. Poor, someone who cannot make the budget of the year, someone who needs with his family $50,000, he or she would make $40,000, $45,000 a year. That person deserves Zakatul Fitr. It is $15 per person. So a family of five would pay $75. That is $15 per person. The breadwinner of the family should pay that amount. The breadwinner, if the husband, the father is the breadwinner, he would take care of it. If the mother, if the mother is a breadwinner, sorry to say that, then she has to pay that, inshallah. So it depends on you, whether you want to be breadwinner or consumer only.